So welcome, welcome everybody. <clears throat> it's a new human experience podcast. And today is January the 28th, 2021. The topic for this evening is navigating your mind. Um, I talked about last week that the, the, um, the theme this year that the all of 2021, I want to talk about really how to step up, how to start to um, live our life the way that we wanted to, the way that we our soul came here to do. So that's why one of the things that I want to start to talk about is really um, more about understanding our own makeup how what what being human is really about and when i start to look at this i actually discovered that there is so much that we don't know nor do we understand about the human experience even though we've been here for at least you know um 15 000 years maybe longer um so however i'm not actually joking. I'm not really joking when I say that we don't even know what we don't know. Like there, there are different layers. Um, we don't know what we don't know. And then we kind of know what we don't know. Uh, and, and then when we um, grow in our consciousness, then we start to know a little bit of, of some things and all that. And we right now are actually at the, um, just starting to scratch the surface. We are at the stage where we don't even know what we don't know. Um, I think maybe except for a handful of people like Franco, like people that have a lot more access and really have a, a lot more experience at a soul level that they can tap into these information and understanding. But for the rest of us, me included, <clears throat> I'm qu quite confident to say that we have no idea what the human experience, and I can also say that what the human experiment really is about. We at the, I, I'm the first to admit that we don't know. <clears throat> And you may, may argue, some people may argue when they hear this is that, well, there are actually a lot of authorities, scientists, physicists, biologists, doctors, blah, blah, blah. They have been studying all these things. They are sequencing the, the genome. They're studying our DNA. And I just actually want to tell you that if you even talk to a scientist, from any of the field, from medical field, from physicists to whatever it is, as long as you talk to a scientist, real scientist, and if they tell you that they know how the universe work, or at least they know what their field is about and how the universe is supposed to work according to like their field of studying, then I can, really say that I know for certain that they're lying and at best that they are only second-rate scientists. Why? Why am I so so um, confident in saying that is because um, uh, the people that actually know that they don't know are the really the brightest mind. They are really the ones that actually can grasp how little we know, how little we actually know. We have a lot of theories. We have done a lot of experiments. Don't get me wrong. We've been studying sciences. We've been doing, we have been looking at the stars, astronomy, all of that. We've been doing a lot of studying. However, nobody knows what the facts are yet. <clears throat> we have a lot of theories. And sometimes the theories, um, um, some of the theories can actually explain a lot of the phenomenon that, or, or I should say reality. It seems to explain and fit the realities. However, the, if you really talk to a scientist, they would let you, like 
an honest scientist would tell you that they don't know and that all they have is theories. Now, I know that all of you probably have heard of something called the Big Bang Theory because there, there actually was a, um, a comedy show, a sitcom based on that, based on the Big Bang Theory. But what you don't know is that um, the Big Bang Theory, why is it called the Big Bang Theory? It is not called the Big Bang Fact. It is not called Big Bang um, you know, observation that we know. It is called a Big Bang Theory because it is only a theory and that's all that exists in science. It's a theory. We have a theory, we have a, a theory is really kind of like a model. We have a model of how the, the world works. And some of the things that um, they've been, that the scientists have been able to, to ex, um, like develop experiments around and all of that, they're able to test some of the theories and some theories are better than others. And this one that, um, the one that we, that pretty much everybody knows about the Big Bang Theory is actually is a theory that um, have been disproven, meaning that it's now actually has fallen out of favor because there's been so many in, um, inadequacies and so many things that the Big Bang Theory cannot experience. It cannot um, explain, cannot explain about reality. And <clears throat> so within the scientific circles, they actually already know that the Big Bang Theory does not hold water at all. And they've known it for decades. Why do I know that? Because in around 1990s, Michael Talbot wrote a book called The Holographic Universe. And um, Talbot is a scientist, and I don't, I, I haven't really looked into the, 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 like when it is that this theory actually um, started out. But I do know that the book, the act, there, this is actually a book. If you go on to, um, you can go on Amazon, you can go on to Indigo and and search for that that book. There is such a book. It's called The Holographic Universe and written by a very um, brilliant scientist called Michael Talbot. And so that was at least 30 years ago. They already have some idea that the fact that we live in a hologram, it's a, meaning that it is a simulated reality, meaning it's not reality at all. It's actually um, it's a simulation, it's not real. It's only a simulation. So does that sound familiar? That's actually what um, Marissa, uh, Marina has been saying is that we live in a hologram. That's what she meant. And she's not like, maybe when you first hear about it, you don't, you think that it is, oh, she's, she's just channeling crazy things. No, it's actually science, scientific, community already know that this, that we are living in a simulation, we are living in a hologram. That's already, I'm not saying that every scientist, because there are scientists that, um, science, scientists don't quite agree on it yet, but they are actually very reputable scientists. And some of the brightest scientists already signed on and they know that this, this real, what we call this reality is actually just a hologram. And so um, if we think that, you know, we hear something of what Marina said that it's a hologram, we don't understand it. And however, when we think of things like the Big Bang Theory and we think that it's legitimate, it's actually quite the other way around. The Big Bang Theory, explains nothing. It does not really explain the, um, the reality as observed by the, the, the best minds in science. And the best minds in science is actually coming around, becoming more and more convinced that we live in hologram. 
And it actually, it shows how ignorant we truly are in that people, like ordinary people, and unless you are a scientist, you would have some idea that this is really what's going on. But you know, that the um, away from the scientific um, circles, this idea that this is a hologram is not something that is commonplace. And most people actually would much rather spend time watching a, a, a comedy show like the Big Bang Theory than to actually take the time to educate themselves to what real science is. Because um, if we actually take the time to, to care about the real sciences, meaning care about the reality, what reality really is, and really start to look at what reality is, then um, our reality would be very different. We would, our consciousness would be able to grow actually at a much faster pace. I'm not trying to say that there's anything wrong with watching, you know, a comedy show or, or, or television. Not, not at all. I'm just simply suggesting that um, if your life is really wonderful and everything is going hunky dory, then carry on. Obviously, all these other things um, doesn't really matter because your life seems to work for you. However, if life as you know it right now is not seem to be working for you, if you have some inkling that there is more, it can't be so, it can't be what it is right now because you don't quite resonate with it, then it is time to to pay more attention to these things, these other things, and, and just have an open mind about what reality really is. Your mind actually is your personal tool or an instrument to navigate reality. It's, it's a scientific fact that we don't see with our eyes. Our eyes simply take in information or energy. Um, and so the, the energy comes from around, from our environment and it hits our eyes. And our eyes is just, is just the, the, um, the, the organ within our body that receives all this information and pass all those information and give that information to our mind, our brain. And then our brain, depending on what our model of reality is and what we believe and, and all of those things, we actually construct a reality within our mind. And, and this is not just the, how the eyes are. Actually, what we hear is the same thing. We don't actually hear what we hear. We actually hear sounds and vibration. We hear frequency. And when all those information, sounds, frequency being information, is passed through our eardrums into our brain, our brain actually interprets it and create, um, uh, um, may make sense of what we are hearing and what all that is. Same goes for our sense of smell, our sense of taste. All of the way that we take in the, the senses, all those five senses, five, maybe six senses, well, for, for some people, but for most people, our five senses actually passes through our brain and our mind from how we are being educated, how we, we are being um, taught to, to interpret reality. That's how we actually create. We take all of these, these outside stimulus information and we construct reality within our mind, within our brain. And, um, and that's, that's why our consciousness is so important now. There is so, it's, it's so important to raise our 
level of consciousness now because we have been um, really distracted um, and, and, and conditioned to only take in a certain very narrow band of information, of energies from our five senses. And we have been trained very hard to only focus and create the reality that we are seeing right now. What we are thinking of as reality is actually not the reality that's actually around us. It's a conditioned reality. So what we know of as reality is actually very different. And we are at the stage where we're starting to grow our consciousness. And actually the, 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 the newer generations, they, are, um, they come from a very different and higher consciousness and their mind, their, their mind is already conditioned to be able to interpret the, the reality, the, all the, 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 the different energetic and vibrational inputs and be able to see and construct a completely different reality. And that's why there's been so much, um, I would say, attempts to dumb down these, these new and improved young people because their mind actually is, is much higher and, and closer to fifth dimension than people like, like me who are, you know, in our sixties. And, and, and like, even if you're younger in your fifties, you, you already had 50 years, 50 plus years of conditioning to only see the things that your community kind of tells you that you are supposed to see. And so much of your thinking has already been, been um, completely cut off. Um, not that it's permanently cut off, nothing is permanent. And that's why all these, these, these um, I would say, different hits of energy that is hitting earth now is actually trying to, to open up our circuitry, open up the way that we can, can reinterpret reality. For those who are open to, to being able to um, perceive these different realities that are all coexisting at the same time. So that's why tonight's um, topic is about how to navigate your mind because we've been conditioned for so many years. Now, how do we start to navigate around this steel trapped mind that is being so um, um, trained to only see things from a, from a very narrow point of view. How do we do that? Just taking from what um, Marina said, and it's not just Marina, it's, it's also Franco, it's also Anelia, and it's also a lot of the, the I would say the people that are, are more tuned in, they already know that Reality is a hologram, meaning that reality is, is not, there's a lot more to the reality than we know of. So the important thing is to really just be open, open your mind. And if you ever come across some ideas that to your mind seems like, ah, oh, that's impossible. They are, they're talking crazy. Um, don't listen to it. Well, okay, L let me rephrase that. You can listen to it and you can, you can observe how your mind reacts to it. What 
or your internal dialogue is including all oh, this is crazy crazy talk like all those comments all those judgment however like just observe it but don't um don't pay too much attention to it don't think that that is you know what you think is actually the the the, the gospel truth that is what I've been taught is the truth and nothing but the truth. Um, I'm sorry, that's completely not the case, not anymore. We are in a very different playing ground, very different set of energies that's hitting us. And we're in that transition, transition period. So within this transition period, it's very important to when you come across something that seems to be completely different from what you think of as reality, the, the rea reality that you've been taught and lived for the last, I don't know, 50, 60, or how, however many years, is to just observe. And, and if you have judgment, whatever emotions coming up, frustrations, um, disbelief, all that, just observe and don't buy into your own um, bias yet. It's uh, now it's I'm, I'm fully understand that it's not easy. But this is something that if you really want to be open to change, to keep an open mind, that's something that that's a good skill to have is to don't close the book on anything yet is to simply keep an open mind and observe. And what you want to do is actually, um, is, to, is just to understand that all your, your judgment, um, all the, the indignation or maybe frustrations, disbelief that comes up is simply your body reacting to um, to new information based on the old belief. So whenever you your old belief system is all stored in your body. So when you listen to something and you feel like some new ideas and you feel this 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 um, frustration because it does not this new idea does not resonate yet with your your body and you have emotions coming up to that is really um, defending your old position. If you are really interested in transitioning into a higher um, dimension to to be able to incorporate newer ideas the first thing you have to do, I would actually suggest you to do, is to observe how you react and observe what you're like, what's going on with your body. Because I can absolutely um, assure you that you would have physical sensation, you would have um, judgments coming up, even if you hear something that is the truth. As long as it does not resonate with your current um, level of understanding of what reality actually is, you would even if even if what you the new information you're hearing is the truth and nothing but the truth, as long as it's something new, your body will react to it, and that's what the body does. This is just something that you, you need to understand how your body is, how your belief system is. It is, it is um, created for you to not um, throw out ideas. It is created for you to actually hang on to old ideas because we like certainty. And that's just the an old. Um, that's just the, the the older generation. We like things to be certain. We we like that. And when things change, we don't like it. 
even though on some level we like the change, we want change. But when change actually happens, our first reaction is, I don't like this. I don't, this is uncomfortable. And that's part of the, um, it's part of the journey is, is really to observe the discomfort that's coming up in your mind and be able to decipher whether that discomfort is because it's something that is, whether that piece of information is something that is a lie or whether it is something that is the truth, but only something that is new and that we, this new information is coming in to shake up our old understanding. So, so how do we, how do we do that? How do we, how do we decipher whether the new piece of information is totally a lie? That's why it does not resonate with us at a body level versus something that is the truth, but it's a piece of new information that that um, we haven't in integrated into our body yet. So that is um, something that I would suggest that if you want to tell which is which, and the best way is to really find a quiet time, um, a place where you can be be quiet and be able to to go into your heart, connect with your heart, and um, shift into a different state of mind, shift into a calm and centered state of mind in being more of a meditative state. You need not be, you know, in deep meditation, but just when you are calm and centered. And you can do that just by maybe um, doing one of um, Franco's mm -hmm. meditation, my meditation, anyone's meditation, as long as that meditation guides you into a shift your state into calm and centered and you're no longer in reaction mode and you're just able and re to be able to tap into the guidance from your heart because when you're not reacting your heart actually knows what is the truth what resonates with you and what is important for you to um, take in right now, your heart actually does know. It is just that when you are triggered and you're reacting, you, you, you don't know. So you need to get out of being the, the triggered mode and get into calm and center. And when you are calm and centered, then you can start to review this new piece of information and really start to feel it from your heart. And and from there, you would be able to um, sense, does it actually open your heart? Or does it actually, it's so alien to, to the, the truth that is, that is living within you that, you know, it's, uh, nah, this, this completely does not resonate with me. So when you take the time to really be calm and centered and go into your heart and then review information, new information from that point of view, you would be able to um, tell the difference between whether a new piece of information is something that is the truth or whether it is a lie. And this also is the way that you, what you can do is, let's say if you want to shift something, you, you want to, to change, you want to make a change in your life, then don't make a change in your life because you know your current life completely sucks and everything is bad and I don't have money, I have no one to love me, blah, blah, blah. Like when you're feeling that, that's not the, the the right frame of mind to create a new reality for yourself. Just shift your perspective, shift your, um, your mindset, and just get yourself to being calm and centered and start to process some of the emotional states and, and you know, get back down from the ceiling first. 
and then you can tap into your heart and start to to like really get into your heart and get a sense of what do you really resonate with what is the, um, the guidance from your soul, from your entity, from, from the, the, the being that is within you, the spark of light that is within you? What is that inner knowing trying to bring forth within your life? So when you are able to, to do all of these things, and then get into your heart and start to, to tap in, you would be able to start to find out what it is that your, your soul wanted you to um, create, co-create for you to experience what it is that is going to resonate with why you're here with um, like, what is the purpose of your life? And I know some of you may not be able to, to tap into your soul yet. It's, it's a process. However, you have to start somewhere and, and start to, to go into your heart and, and start to do the inner work of healing your heart. Um, most of the time, if you you can't hear what your your um, heart is telling you, what your soul is trying to communicate to you. A lot of times it's because of trauma, because you haven't really um, healed yourself enough for you to actually feel safe within your heart. When you feel safe, your heart would be would feel would know that it is safe to open up, but when you um, haven't quite done enough work to heal yourself, then you are still coming from the the, the point of view of being hurt, and I have to I have to hang on to um, all of my old ideas because if God forbid if I need if I let anything new in. Um, it's going to rock my world and I don't know how to deal with that. And that's what's really underneath that. And when you really start to be gentle with yourself and, and take the time, even though you may not be able to hear what your soul is communicating with you, but spend the time to just be in the state of allowance, allow yourself to hear it. Um, when you don't try so hard to, to um, get, get the download, I want the download, give me the good stuff. It's, it's, it's a very aggressive way of getting information from yourself. And sometimes your, your inner self may not feel safe when you're you're in this I I can't hear you I like I need to hear you because you know my life depends on it that's too much pressure just relax and keep calm and just be open to listening to your <clears throat> your inner guidance and when you start to be in the space of allowance be in the space of feeling safe and allowing yourself to feel safe when you start to heal all of those you now those you know hard times that that you think you have um that somehow life have been, have, <clears throat> have inflicted on you and from a certain point of view that that is true yes life has not been easy <clears throat> Um, Earth is the, the school of hot knocks, and I do not, I do not blame you if you, if if it's not easy. I'm just saying that be in a space of allowing 
peace and calm and easy to come. And it may not come um, the first day, it may not come the first week, but in time it will come. Just, just be patient with yourself. Be available to hear communication from your, from your soul, from your higher self, and all that will come when you take the time to, to really check in with your soul. And um, so that really is, is my big, um, I would say, my big aha uh -huh, and my big, um, that's my big tip for you is that, is to really understand that there's so much we don't know about reality. Even though we may think that, oh, we have lived for so many decades. We have lived for so many decades with both hands tied behind our back with so many things that, um, that we don't understand. We, we were so distracted by, you know, we need to make a living, we need to do this, we need to do all of that. All of these <clears throat> things that we think makes what a successful human life is, is actually not important at all. It's, it's actually, um, it's, it's part of the program to keep us so preoccupied that we don't get to know who we truly are, that we don't get to know, and we have no time to really look into what reality actually is. So give yourself the time to be open to new things and to, instead of, you know, reacting instead of um, rejecting anything new, is to just observe, just be open to new um, realities. Be open to, within, well, okay, I, I don't really know how long, I can't really say, it's very individual. For some people, it may be a few years. For some people, it may be another 10, 15 years. Um, it really depends on how, um, how your, your soul can guide you on this journey of incorporating these new understanding of reality, of starting to open up your your senses again, so that you can learn, you can un you need to unlearn all that you've been taught how to interpret all the signals that's coming in, and then relearn it only from a much higher frequency and vibration, much higher brand uh, band of, of uh, energy, and be able to open your senses up so that you can take in all these new frequency and learn the, the, the new way of reinterpreting what reality is. And that's what the, the fifth dimension is about, is, is um, it's learning how to let go of what we've learned in um, inverted matrix and then be open. Right now, just be open for new ideas to come along and know that you will react because within your body, your mind, there's still so much of the old um, foundation that we need to dismantle right now. It's still there. And, but bit by bit, if you open, if you just keep an open mind and take the, the, um, the time to, to start to tune in and start to um, understand from your, from a, um, 
a calm and meditative state of mind to start to separate the, the lies from the truth, then you will start to slowly incorporate and be able to be open to change your model of reality and switch it to fifth dimension. And that's what I mean to say when I um, talk about the, the topic of navigating your mind is that when all these new things come, all these new changes come, being discomfortable is part of the journey. Mm, reacting and feeling lonely, feeling um, feeling rejected, all sorts of feelings, feeling confused. That's all part of the journey is to, to just know that you're doing this, you're feeling all these negative emotions. It's because something new is trying to come in and that's our body. Our body is still holding the old patterns. And the more you are open to just observe and go into your heart to sort out what is what are the lies and what are the truths and start to incorporate the truths or at the very least incorporate what resonates with you when you're in that still calm place within your your heart that's the best way for you to move to navigate all of that um that old thinking and not try to get too frustrated or too um or too confused when all this new things, new energies, new ideas, new ways of doing things will start to open up. So that's all I have to say on this topic this evening. <laughs>